today i like to talk on uh, uh, poverty and indebtedness <coughs> buddha said the uh, address the bhikkhus and uh, said bhikkhus isn't it poverty suffering in the world for one who enjoys sensual pleasures they said yes those who enjoy sensual pleasures <coughs> poverty is uh, suffering as you all know those who enjoy the sensual pleasures are called kama bhogi in pali kama bhogi kama bhogi so poverty for kama bhogi people who enjoy sensual pleasures poverty is suffering because they cannot get what they want with the <clears throat> they don't have money uh they don't have wealth to get what they wanted so they have suffering <clears throat> and on the top of that they are then uh <clears throat> if a poor uh, restitute person gets into debt is it has indebtedness to suffering in the world for one who likes to enjoy sensual pleasures yes of course when he borrows and uh, he is indebted <coughs> uh so that indebtedness is uh, suffering for him because uh, it is always nagging uh, he this is a burden to him then he is his he is suffering then if poor destitute would a person <coughs> who has gone into debt promises to pay interest when he borrows some money from banks uh, he has to pay interest <coughs> and accumulating interest is also suffering for him it keeps nagging it hurts him so person who enjoy who wants to enjoy sensual pleasures has to borrow something because he doesn't have enough when he borrows <coughs> he has to pay it back with interest and interest is in increasing that is suffering for him then if a poor destitute person uh, who has uh, promised to pay interest cannot pay it he has interest but he cannot pay because he he doesn't have enough income no job he borrowed money with the intention of doing some business but he failed his business he cannot find uh, any uh, trade any business any invest there's no place to invest so his interest increase and uh, Uh, but he cannot pay interest and the capital 
capital and interest, both he has to pay now. So it is suffering for him, he wants to enjoy sensual pleasures. And then, <clears throat> if a poor destitute person who is uh, reproved does not pay, they prosecute him. If he does not pay his debt with interest, uh, people will uh, prosecute him. And this prosecution is suffering for him. Now it's from uh, a frying pan to fire. <laughs> On the one hand, he is poor, borrowed money. Now he cannot pay the capital with the interest. Then the people <coughs> or the bank that loan him money, they will prosecute him. Now, double headache. Prosecution is headache. That is suffering for him. Who wants to enjoy sensual pleasure? His intention is to enjoy sensual pleasure. But he, he, he goes with more trouble. And then, if poor destitute person uh, who is uh, prosecuted does not pay, they imprison him. And imprisonment is suffering for him. And he wants to enjoy sensual pressure, now end up in jail. That is suffering for him. So the Buddha said, monks, because for one who enjoys, who uh, one who enjoys sensual pleasures, poverty is suffering in the world. Getting into debt is suffering in the world. Having to pay interest is suffering in the world. Being reproved, demanded, accused for not paying interest is suffering for him. And then prosecution is suffering for him. And putting him to jail is suffering for him. Now, he is in a, always, he is in a unlucky throw. Always he has suffering. And therefore, the Buddha said, this is a, then Buddha compared this to a monastic life. And he said, similarly, because when one does not have faith, faith uh, in cultivating wholesome qualities, When faith is uh, not blind faith, but faith in the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, end out with knowledge, understanding. If one doesn't have that kind of faith uh, in cultivating wholesome qualities, when one does not have a sense of moral shame in cultivating wholesome qualities, sadha, hiri. Uh, moral shame is called hiri. And uh, does not have uh, ottap uh, in cultivating wholesome qualities, moral dread in cultivating wholesome qualities, that means uh, he is not afraid of committing whole something, uh, uh, wrong thing. And he has to have some fear of committing unwholesome things so that he can commit wholesome things. 
wholesome qualities. One who does not have energy in uh, cultivating wholesome qualities. One who doesn't have wisdom in cultivating wholesome qualities. In the noble one's dis discipline, one is poor in not having these things. What are the necessary things to be rich? Faith, moral shame, moral dread, energy, wisdom. These five qualities one should have to be rich. If one does not have these five qualities, he is poor. He is poor. So, <clears throat> having no faith, no sense of moral shame, no moral dread, no energy, no wisdom uh, in cultivating wholesome qualities, that poor, destitute person engages in misconduct by body, speech, and mind. When he is very poor, he, has, he, he will uh, not poor in uh, faith, moral shame, moral dread, and energy and wisdom. He is poor. When he is poor in these things, he does not have qualities to develop wholesome physical, verbal, and mental qualities, wholesome qualities. And that is called getting into debt. Getting into debt. Now, if the, uh, if the monastic does not have these qualities, he gets into debt and and he he borrows their his food, robes, lodging, medicine from people. People support him, and if he doesn't have these qualities, he is indebted to people because he doesn't have these qualities. So. <clears throat> Now, and because of that, to conceal his uh, bodily misconduct, and uh, and he nurtured evil desire. What is the evil desire? He, he doesn't have these five qualities, therefore he is poor, and he commits unwholesome thoughts, words, and deeds. And still he has to get support from people. Therefore he has to hide his <clears throat> he has to hide his misconduct in body, speech and mind. And he thinks <clears throat> he wishes let no one know me. He intends with the aim, let no one know me. He address statements. With the, in, with, with the aim, let no one know me. He makes bodily endeavors with the in, intention of let no one know me. So is to conceal his verbal misconduct, physical misconduct, mental misconduct, he nurtures evil desire. Thinking, let no one know me. He interests with the aim, let no one know me. That is some uh, sankap, a mitya sankap. He utters statement with the intention, not no one know me. And he makes bodily conduct with the intention of not no one, let no one know me. And let no one know me. And he says, 
that is his interest that he must pay. <clears throat> On the one hand, he, he is indebted. Now we added interest into that because he had to conceal his, hide his misconduct, body, word, word and mental misconduct. That is the interest that he has to pay. <clears throat> and then the well-behaved monastics will be well-behaved in uh, uh, mental, verbal and physical behavior. They will behave. They accuse this monastic who has debts and accumulated interest, they accuse him. They accuse him not using vulgar bad words, but respectable words. They say, they say this venerable one acts in such a way, behaves in such a way, and that kind of reproval accusation, Buddha said, is being reproved and and this reproving <coughs> is suffering for him. When he goes, has gone to forest, to the foot of a tree, or to empty hut, and uh, to meditate <clears throat> with this debt, moral interest, paying, goes to a forest, a dwelling, a calm place, to meditate. And um, then his bad, unwholesome thought accompanied by remorse assailed him. This unwholesome thought always prick his mind, accuse him. He cannot concentrate. Even though he goes to secluded place, quiet place, cemetery and so on, he cannot meditate and he will be full of remorse and he can gain concentration. That is his prosecution. Just like lay person borrowed money, doesn't pay interest and so forth, and he will be prosecuted. Similarly, when the monastery goes to the forest with all these uh, unwholesome, poorest conditions, uh, he he will be uh, he will feel guilty and he cannot meditate and that is his prosecution. He will be prosecuted by his own guilt. <clears throat> then Buddha said, with the not only that, as uh, with the breakup of the body. After death, that poor, uh, destitute person, the monastic, who engaged in misconduct in body, speech, and mind, cannot concentrate well because of his guilty feeling. That would, that person after death, breaking up his body, will be. reborn in the prison of hell, in the prison of hell, or the prison of animal kingdom, animal realm. And Buddha said, I do not see because any other prison that is as terrible as and harsh and such an abstract uh, to attaining the <coughs> That 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 uh, is uh, of 
what you call obstruct, obstruct the attainment of liberation, security from bondage, as the prison of hell or the prison of animal realms. Now, in this poor condition, that person will be, be in prison. Of so, therefore, uh, this simile is a very beautiful simile. Lay people want to enjoy pleasure, but they cannot because they are poor. Then they borrow something. And that is a very headache. Similarly, monastics want to, the monastic the lay people are poor in material things. Monastics are poor in spiritual practice. They are poor in their faith, in their moral shame, moral fear, energy and wisdom. Sadha, Hiri, Ottapa, Virya and Panya. These five qualities are very important for the monastic or those who practice spiritual life, want to live a spiritual life. These five things are very important. And faith in the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, morality, karma, dependent origination, free birth, they have to have faith. And if they don't have faith, no matter how hard they try, they cannot achieve their goal. And therefore, they are poor in spiritual attainment. They are poor. At the same time, if they have moral shame, without shame they say various sh sh unacceptable things, that is telling lies, slanderous talk, harsh speech, gossip, and these things verbally, they commit unwholesome things because they have no moral shame of reproval, of accusation. And thirdly, they have, don't have moral dread, no fear of reproval, accusation, punishment. With this, without this, they say various unwholesome things they do various unwholesome things physically and mentally they commit unwholesome things. And fourthly, <clears throat> they don't have energy, lazy, complacent, postpone things and say, well, I have, they give all kind of reason to practice meditation and so on, practice morality, practice generosity, practice practicing metta and so on, they are lazy, giving all kind of accusation. And therefore, they, because they don't have energy, no, they have wisdom, wisdom to liberate themselves. I will be reborn again and again in samsara if I don't liberate now, if I don't arouse my spiritual urgency, dhamma sangvega, and uh, keep uh, postponing in spite of all these possibilities available to them, they ignore them, 
when they ignore, they are, they are unwise, they are foolish. Therefore, they have to take the advantage of the human life to practice and arouse their spiritual urgency. That's what one does with wisdom. If they don't have all these things, they are poor. They are poor. And when they are poor, with this poor condition, they eat food that people give. They, are, they wear robes that people give. They live in a Kutish monastery that people build for them. They take medicine that people give. Then they have debt to people. <clears throat> they have debt to people. When the Mahakasapa said, I have been using this requisite and I was indebted to people for seven days. I was indebted to people for seven days. After seven days, I was free from indebtedness. I am not, I don't have any debt to people. Nor do I have to pay any interest. Because I have achieved my goal. And I am free from my uh, debt. And that is in order to encourage this Buddha gave this sermon. And then when the, we have interest, uh, because of the spiritual poverty, our in interest uh, increased. We may have double interest, triple, and then keep piling up our interest. That is very difficult, painful, suffering situation. And then those who support will accuse this monastic eat our food, live in our lodgings and so on, but they don't practice. They accuse. That is suffering. And then on the top of that, they also do all kinds of wrong things and try to hide them, become hypocrites. And that is uh, another uh, suffering because they have to hide all these things. That's the suffering. And moreover, when they uh, don't pay interest, let people don't pay interest, and the lenders, banks or individuals will prosecute them. That is suffering. After prosecution, they will put into jail. So the Buddha said, spiritual jail, that is mundane jail. Spiritual jail is being born in hell, being born in animal kingdom. Once they are, we are born there, whoever will suffer for an indefinite period of time. <clears throat> Therefore, Indebtedness is suffering, and uh, so he cannot pay anything. Prosecution is suffering, imprisonment is suffering, and then and cannot gain liberation from suffering. So, uh, in the noble disciples, in the Dhammas Buddha's teaching, uh, Lack of faith is lack of faith, lack of shame, lack of moral bread, lack of energy, lack of wisdom is all these five things makes a person poor. So we want to be rich, especially monastic want to be rich with all these things and do not want to be indebted to the lenders. <laughs> then there's the people who give them support and don't want to hide their misdeed.
in thoughts, words, and deeds. And therefore, this in, this uh, teaching uh, is very very interesting. You find this in uh, this discourse in Anguttara Nikaya, sixth section, Chakkanipata, Chakkanipata, sixth chapter. And therefore, friends, I think I end this uh, talk here now. Let us do some, uh, spend some time in meditation. That is uh, actually this discourse encourages us to do more spiritual practice like meditation. Let us do that. Okay. 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 May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate to all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred to resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake. One should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one can't sneak again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us meditate for the next 25 minutes.
And by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be, from the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen from this world, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, friends, yes, that is the end of our today's session. And I hope you learned something uh, very important to arouse our spiritual urgency. And I want to end this session with my regular wish. May all those who are in hospitals suffering from various sickness taken care of by doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. May they all get well soon and return to regular life, practice Dhamma, and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, hospital staff who take care of these people also find time to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and are grieving, may they be free from grief and understand the nature of Dhamma, nature of life, and try to practice Dhamma and meditation and arouse our spiritual urgency as I mentioned earlier and liberate themselves from samsari suffering. All those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, and eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, up and below, all those who are in this ten direction be well, happy, and peaceful. May they all attain liberation. This is our earnest wish, and I hope they all attain liberation from samsari suffering. With this metta wish, let us end this today's session. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, 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 Bhante. Sadhu. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you, Bhante.